Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 22 on Elm Creek. So this is a bit of a different video from what I'm normally doing with my episodes. Um, I'm going to do a little how-to video and show you how to maximize the yield and how to um, yeah, get to terms with all the new features in regards to all the equipment that's been added. Because uh, it has changed quite a bit and actually I think it's a lot better. I really do. Uh, so we're going to try and maximize this field out here to the, the maximum it can reach on potential for yield and then we're also going to compare it to the most negative reach which uh, I've got on another save game um, so we will compare the yield of this with the same type of crop which we're going to do canola um, against the most negative you can get uh, and just see the difference but yeah this is all the equipment that I've got all ready to go it isn't a class showroom uh, but obviously I've kind of just gone with the same tractor just to make my life a little easy when I was purchasing them um, And I've also used the store delivery mod which is now out as well so We've got a Mulcher over here Which is going to be the first thing we use. We've got a stone collector. We've got a plow a cultivator a roller And then we've also got lime fertilizer and finally a cedar so Let's have a look at the field first. So this state is in harvested. So this is after it's been harvested, um, and this is what you get. So the, you, as you can see, the little the stubs from the the crop that's left is obviously uh, still on the ground. It's chopped it up, and uh, this is the state of the field that it's left in. So if we just quickly go onto here, we can actually look on here. You can see that it says harvested, and also it needs lime. Uh, pretty much needs everything. It needs plowing and lime. So. The first thing we're going to do, however, is we're going to use the mulcher, which is right at the end. Now, by using the mulcher after harvesting, you're going to increase your yield by 5%. So it's something that you should probably want to do. Um, it's a bit different this time because obviously we need to plow as well and spread lime. Now, lime, you're going to spread every three cycles of harvest. So every time, every three harvest in the field, you need to make sure you're spreading lime. And also uh, plowing, if you've got periodic plowing on, you're obviously going to need to do that every now and again. Um, but a lot of the time, if you've not got it set off, you're going to just do it on the first go. Unless you're doing um, corn or a root crop, then you're going to have to plow in between every time. And that can have a negative effect if you're not um, uh, plowing after corn or uh, a root crop, for example. Uh, but with this being, I think it was wheat. Yes, it was. It was wheat. We don't need to make sure we plow it just because of the fact we've done wheat. We need to plow it because it hasn't been plowed um, and periodic plowing is on, as you can see. So, first thing we're going to do is going to mulch this field up. And I have just hit the grass, I know, but we're going to mulch this up. We're going to try and fly through these little bits. And as you can see, there is a change in texture. Um, and I will quickly just jump out after I've done this first row and show you. But remember, this is going to increase by 5%. And every little bit is going to add up to the end. So I'll just line myself up. I'll jump out and we'll have a quick look. So this is what it's looked like. So all the, the stubs that are like the stubble that's left has now been mulched up um, and is sitting on the ground. And what you'll find is we're going to basically plow that or cultivate it, depending on what you're going to do, into the ground, which is going to increase uh, the yield, probably give a bit of fertilizer. Um, but it is going to add 5%. So that's 5% just there. So what I'll do, because you don't want to be watching me do this whole thing, so the video is not crazy long, I'll finish off mulching the rest of this field, and I'll cut back in when we're on to the next stage. Okay, so there you go. That's that field done, all mulched up. Uh, quickly just going to show you in the menu where you can buy the mulchers from. So that's the mulcher there. Uh, different sizes, all do the same thing. As you can see, it says mulchers can be used to crush the crop stubbles. Uh, I've gone for the biggest one there, just because... Obviously, it flies through it. It's a little bit quicker. So the state of this field now is pretty much in a neutral state. There is no state anymore. So if I open up this, you can see that it still requires plowing. But if we go back to this, you can see that the color is completely neutral. There is no indication on the right-hand side of the filters of what that means. And that's basically just a neutral state. It's no longer harvested. Um, it, we've taken that uh, out by obviously mulching it up. So the next stage that I'm going to do is plowing. Um, you need to make sure you do plow because it can it can hinder it. Um, I think it's minus 15% if you don't plow. So if it requires plowing and you carry on, you're going to 
drop your harvest by 15%, which is obviously a big chunk. So you need to make sure that if you've got uh, periodic plowing on, or even if you haven't and you're doing a different top crop type, like uh, uh, corn, for example, it does require um, you for you to plow it. You need to make sure that you're doing that or else you're going to decrease your yield by 15%. Um, when we do the plowing, we're going to have to keep an eye on the stones that are going to appear because the stones also have a negative effect um, so we need to make sure that we keep an eye on them now there is two types of stone from what I gather there's large and also small now the large stones can be picked up by the collector uh, but the small ones can also be rolled back into the ground so when you're going over the ground with a plow or a cultivator or disc harrow for example them kind of tools will bring the stones up from the, the, the lower surface. So if you do use a roller, you can push them back down, but only with the small types of stones. Now, I will be honest, I haven't seen a difference yet in the stone uh, types, so I'm hoping that I can see the two types now whilst doing this. And we can give it an indication, but I am actually going to... I'm not going to use the collector. I'm going to try and use a roller because it does also increase your yield by 5%. But what I'll do is I'll carry on with the plowing and I'll explain that a little bit more in detail when we get to it. Uh, so I'll finish plowing this field and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's this field now fully plowed and as you can see some stones have appeared. So by plowing we've lifted up the stones to the ground which are going to have a negative effect on the yield so we do need to sort that out. But this field now, if we have a quick look, on the map you can see that it says it's in a ploughed state and also it requires lime so what I'm going to quickly do first is spread some lime now by spreading lime on the field it has a positive effect of 15% just like it has a negative effect of 15% of if you don't plough so by keeping the field uh, ploughed when it needs to and also spreading lime that, that accounts to the 15% bonus that we're going to get from doing this which is a good chunk it really is so at the moment we've got 5% from mulching We've got 15% extra from spreading lime and ploughing. And there we go. So that's that done. The field is now ploughed. If we just quickly just move this out of the way, I'll have a quick look at the field and show you. There we go. Be fine over there. And the stones are still there. You can just quite make them out over here. There's some stones there. They have gone a bit camouflaged, but they are there definitely. Just make them out in the, in the distance there. So now it's gone back to a neutral stage on the field. As you can see, it doesn't say it needs lime. Um, it hasn't got any fertilizer yet on the ground. Um, it's completely neutral. So the next stage now um, is actually up to you. You can go straight to cultivating. You can even go to disc harrow. You can go straight to collecting stones, which will change the state of the field to cultivate. But what I'm going to do for the purpose of this video is I'm going to cultivate this field um, by using just a standard cultivator. Now, if I used a disc harrow, uh, it would do the same job, but it increases the um, speed that uh, weeds grow back into the field. So by using a disc harrow, you need to keep an eye on the weeds because they are going to grow quicker by using that. So I'm going to use a cultivator first. We're going to cultivate this field up and we're going to see what happens to the stones. Now, if you go over the field after you've ploughed and cultivated with, let's say, a cedar and the stones in the field, not only are the stones going to have a negative effect, but they're also going to um, make your maintenance level go down quicker on the vehicles because they do do damage. So I'm now cultivating, as you can see, the stones are still there, uh, but the texture is changing, but the stones aren't removing. So plowing and cultivating basically brings up the stones. So say this field didn't need plowing and I'd mulched it and I was going to cultivate it, um, the stones would then start coming back up after I use the cultivator. So it can either be the plow or the cultivator that are going to bring them stones up to the surface, which then going to obviously do damage to your vehicle but also going to decrease the yield of the crop that you're going to plant in so you need to make sure you sort that out so i'll carry on i'll get this field cultivated and i'll move on to the next stage right so that's that done all cultivated and as you can see the stones are there now from my understanding these are small stones so these can be rolled back into the ground which is what i'm going to do next 
by rolling you also increase by five percent the yield so it's important that i do that um next I, mean, I imagine that if you see a big stone you'll notice it it's a lot different i'm hoping so anyway but i haven't seen one yet nothing that indicates that this is these aren't small stones uh, but if you do see a big stone it says that you can only pick them up with the collector over there um, so you need to keep that in mind so we'll go now get the roller and we'll turn this from the cultivated state into the seedbed state on the ground but also increase our yield by five percent so these rollers are pretty cool now there is two types of rollers in the menu and i will show you that quickly just align this up first right so if we go to the tools you can see that there's rollers there so these are the rollers, we've got two options. It says with a roller you can improve the upper soil layer quality of your fields, which is what we're doing. But they basically just increase the yield by 5% and uh, push the stones back down, the small stones back down, not to the top surface of the soil. So they are, it is a, a, an important job. But if you actually look as well here, this grassland care, uh, and these are rollers as well. Now these are just for grass, um, and these increase the yield of your grass, but they also add a fertilizer state uh, stage to uh, the grass so it's important as well that you don't get mixed up between the two types of rollers there's ones for grass but there's also ones for um, the uh, uh, crop types of the fields that you're doing your, your arable fields on so as you can see the stones are now being pushed back down to the ground they're no longer visible uh, we've got a different texture there it looks like a, a like you've been planting but obviously we're just rolling uh, but it's again another aspect to this game so field work is now definitely increased the amount uh, of things that you can do but also the time that it's going to take uh, but it will pay off it definitely will pay off that's a bit I was a bit eager then so yeah it is important that we make sure that we we do all this to get this maximum yield uh, we've already increased by what 15% by doing the lime and um plowing and we've also increased by five percent for mulching the old crop that we harvested so the stubbles back into the ground and now and now we're going to be increasing again by five percent by using the roller and getting rid of the stones keeps catching me out that does Okay, so that's that. We've now put the stones back in the ground. As you can see, they're no longer visible on the top surface of the soil. Uh, we've increased our yield again by another 5% just by doing that. So the next stage is to get the canola in the ground. So I'll bring up the F1 menu so you can see the type that I'm on. So I want to change it to canola. There we go. And I'll unfold and I'll probably start from down here. And we'll have a quick look to see if it changes texture. Because it already does look a lot similar. So it, there is a slight texture change there. It's not 100% visible, but you can just see it. It's like a little bit darker. The gaps are, I think the gaps are uh, slightly wider, but that is difficult to see but there is definitely a change there and as you can see I think the rollers got a little bit more depth in between the gaps than what the planted uh, what the planter has or the cedar has so it is it is pretty difficult to see but it can be done but it's definitely worth doing because it increases by five percent and also you don't have the negative effect then of the stones that are lying on top of the soil yeah you can definitely tell it but it is close very close so I'll carry on doing this I'll cut back in when this is done uh, we will probably skip a little bit of time as well because the next stage after this is going to be to get our two stages of fertilizer on the ground and then also take care of the weeds when we need to do that right so it's all planted in the canola is in this field I'm just going to spray some fertilizer. I have been able to spray it straight after planting. Um, so we're going to get the first layer of fertilizer down, which is going to increase the yield 
by 23%. So each time you do uh, the fertilizer, which is only two stages of now, it's, it's 23% each time. So it's really important that you get the fertilizer on the ground. Uh, so I've got liquid fertilizer here. Um, so I'm just going to quickly spray this. Uh, we're probably going to see some weeds popping up as well. We need to make sure we keep um, our eye on them and get them and get them gone as soon as possible, to be honest, because they are going to have a massive negative effect. Uh, weeds have a minus 20% effect on your yield, so you don't want any weeds in the field at all. Uh, but luckily we're going to have quite a bit. I have noticed as well that if you look in the filter stage on the growth, there is a lot more now. There's a lot more growing stages, as you can see. So you're going to have a lot of chances there to get fertilizer on, to get rid of uh, weeds as well. So it's not as um, difficult now. We're nearly done this. I will be changing this over to herbicide at some point as well. There we go. Job done. So we've got one stage of fertilizer on the canola field. We've pretty much maximized everything. So to recap what we've done so far, we've mulched it, which has increased the yield by 5%. We then plowed and spread lime, which increased the yield again by a further 15%. We then cultivated it, which obviously brought up the rocks, uh, the small rocks on the ground that we then put back into the ground by getting a roller and pushing them back in, which increased the yield by 5% by using the roller. Um, and then we've just planted in the canola and spread some our first layer of fertilizer, uh, first stage of fertilizer, which has increased the yield by 23%. So we're doing quite well at the moment. So we just need to let this uh, canola to grow, and obviously it'll probably bring up some weeds. Um, I'm probably going to need to change to narrow tires as well, so I don't do any damage because that would be really bad. Um, and then we'll get another layer of fertilizer on the ground, but we'll also get rid of the weeds, and then we should be ready for harvest. Right, so welcome back. It's now October, so the next month, as you can see, the crop, the canola, is growing quite nicely. Um, I've got the Fent Favorite 5 on 5 C. Uh, I've got another sprayer on the back with some uh, liquid fertilizer in, um, and I'm just going through and fertilizing it again. So it's only been one month, and I'm already applying the next layer of fertilizer. So this will be maximized now on fertilizer. So. Um, it'll be another 23% on top of the original 23% we did in the previous month. Now, remember to have narrow tires on if you've got crop destruction. Um, and it is difficult to see where you've done. So, I think the best bet here is to just, with it being a small field, I know that I'm going to just go to both edges and I'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much near impossible. When GPS comes out, uh, this this will uh, save this issue. But until then, you're just gonna have to try try your best with the the lines. Right, so that's that done. As you can see, it's growing. It's got probably further on in the growth stage. It's uh it's a little bit around the the middle now, um, and the fertilizer is maximized at its highest level. So what we need to do now is keep an eye out for the weeds. Make sure that we get rid of them. Um, I will be using the same piece of kit that I've got now so I do need to go and empty out the liquid fertilizer I'll quickly just do that and then drop in some herbicide which I've got just here and then we're ready to go and there we go so I'll skip through time I'll cut back in when we're going to get rid of the weeds probably just before harvest actually so we planted the canola in September so we're probably looking for an August um, harvest so we'll try and come back a couple of months before. We'll keep an eye out for it. We don't want the, the the weeds to grow back. And we haven't used a disc harrow. So I'm hoping they don't grow back too much. So I'll skip time and I'll cut back in when we're about to finish off. Right, so it's now February. You can see that the weather's changing. Bit of snow. The texture of the grass has gone a little bit paler. Looking like it's less healthy. Obviously a lot of less nitrogen in the, in the uh, grass itself. Um, and the crop itself is looking pretty good. Um, we haven't picked up any weeds yet, but what we need to make sure is if we have a quick look on the crop calendar. We planted the canola in September. 
So we're probably going to harvest around August. So I'm going to have a quick look at June. Make sure there's no weeds. But the most important thing is there's no weeds the month before it goes into harvest. Because if we get, say there's weeds in July, for example, I get rid of them there. It's then going to change over to August, ready to harvest with no weeds before. So we don't have the negative effect, which is 20%. And we don't want that 20% hit. So I'm going to cut back in uh, just before, probably a couple of months before, have a have a, a check when the weeds are, but we need to make sure we hit them at the right time so they're not there uh, when, when we're about to turn over to ready to harvest. Right, so it's June, and as you can tell, the canola is growing really well, and I've still not got any weeds, so we do need to keep a close eye on this because if they come within the next month in July and we harvest in August, we need to make sure that we get rid of them then. But if they don't appear... In July, then we shouldn't have had any weeds for when I expected to be ready to harvest, which is in August. So we can change over to the next month because there isn't any weeds right now. As you can see, if I just quickly go to this menu, you can see that it just says fertilize. There's no weeds. Uh, so that is a nice, nice bonus at the moment. So I'll skip over to the next date and I'll cut back in and we'll have a quick look at it, how it's looking then. Right, so it's July and we've still got not, no weeds which is pretty interesting. Now, I don't know if it's something that we did to stop the weeds from coming. I'm not 100% certain, but right now, following the method that I've done, there has been no weeds in the canola field, and I have checked my settings to see if weeds are on, which they are, and I'll just quickly show you that. So if you go down to here, uh, where is it, where is it? Weeds, there we go. So weeds is on, lime requires on, uh, field stones are on. Periodic plowing is off, but that's because I needed the field. It, it needed to be plowed anyway, so I didn't need to turn that on. Um, so, so far, so good. So I'm expecting us to go into August. And it should be ready to harvest without any negative effects at all. Okay, so as predicted, in August, the canola is now ready to harvest. And we didn't get any weeds. So following the method that I did... Luckily, I got no weeds at all to worry about. Um, now, I have got this New Holland CH7. Um, I'm going to use the exact same harvester on the other field that's got the negative effect of weeds and needs plowing, so it's going to have uh, quite a big hit to it, so we will compare. So let's crack on, get this um, harvested. Now, I can't obviously put any straw out because of the fact that um, there's no straw with canola, uh, so we can't compare that, unfortunately. Uh, but we should be able to compare the yield. Now, it is only a, full, uh, a small field, and it is canola, so we're going to get less anyway because of that uh, than what we would with for wheat, for example. But it's still going to be a much higher yield than what we would have got with canola if we hadn't done all this prep for the field um, to increase to the maximum we can with this size field anyway. Uh, the good thing about this harvester as well, it will not take long at all. So I'll carry on, I'll get it done. I'll cut back in when I'm just on my last little bit and I can show you the, the total amount that we've picked up. Right, so there we go. We got 1,950 litres, which doesn't seem like a lot. It really doesn't. But it is a small field and it's canola, which obviously gives off a lot less yield anyway. So... You've got to scale this up to whatever you're doing if you're doing a bigger field, which if you are doing canola, you should be doing a bigger field anyway. Um, so let's just put it into the trailer so we can see the, the amount coming out and you can see as well it transferring over here. Now I think, there we go. So not much at all really when you think about it. It just goes to show how difficult canola is when it comes to the yield and the amount you're going to get. Anyway, and that is with the maximum. That is maximising on everything. We've got 1,950 litres, so it is going to be interesting to see the difference maximising the yield of canola to uh, the other field that's going to have a negative effect. But yeah, 1,950 litres. I'll jump into the other save game. We'll harvest that field up and we'll have a comparison. Right, so now we're in a field that's in a lot worse state. 
as you can see there's weeds the canola is ready to harvest it's at zero percent fertilized if i quickly just show you in the map you can see that it's um, ready to harvest it definitely needs uh, plowing it needs fertilizer it needs lime and it's obviously got a lot of weeds in so this is i'm hoping if the game is actually working properly which i'm 100 certain it will be um and this is going to be a lot worse so let's get to it let's harvest this away and we'll have a look to see what the yield's going to be on this field and we'll compare it at the end right so there we go and as you can see I don't know if you can make it out in the bottom right corner it's a lot less so that's 1135 litres of canola from this field the exact same size field exact same crop but with this one having a minus 35 percent yield than the field that we did that had i've worked it out to be 71 percent increase so it just goes to show and especially if you scale that up onto a big field uh, that, that does make a lot a lot of difference because if you're doing a big field a massive field um, with canola or any other type of uh, crop for example if you're doing wheat you're obviously going to get bigger yields anyway uh, so it's going to have a massive impact on your yield so it's good to know and going forward I'll definitely be following this um, route when it comes to uh, preparing my fields in the right way because getting 1000 what was it 1000 and 1,135 litres of canola compared to 1,950 litres of canola with such a small field. Yeah, if you scale that up to the bigger fields, you're definitely gonna. It's definitely gonna pay off by doing it. So hopefully that's helped you out. Hopefully it's uh, showing you the system and how it works with the yields, um, how they've changed things and added uh, different kind of uh, equipment to the game and how they improve and also have a negative effect with the stones, which you can just make out in the field still. Um, on the actual yield itself but i am going to leave the video there so thanks for watching hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have please give it a thumbs up and also if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on farming simulator